Elvis Presley and June Juanico first met when he played in her hometown, Biloxi, Mississippi, a typical small town at the time. Elvis Presley was getting his start, and he was already famous in the South, and this is 1955. And so a friend of mine called and uh, told me that she saw him the night before, and she found out that he was performing again in Biloxi and uh, wanted me to go with her. She said, you've got to see this man. You've got to see him. She said, he's the most beautiful th creature you've ever seen in your lifetime. You've got to see him. And so I'm, yeah, 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 you know me. I'm thinking, yeah, well, you know what's so... I mean, I had a handsome boyfriend at the time, so... Um, anyhow, we went, um, me kind of reluctantly, and I dressed and went to see this Elvis Presley person. And while I'm waiting to be picked up to go see him, I had the radio on, and uh, That's All Right Mama came on the radio. And I thought, what is, you know, this is the guy I'm getting ready to go see. And, uh, and I thought, God, this, you know, he doesn't sound gorgeous. He sounds a little bit uh, quivery voiced and, you know, and it was just a sound that I was not used to hearing. It was good, but it was a sound that was, you know, a little foreign to me at the time. So, but when we went in and the curtains opened and I looked at this, my heart just, like, jumped into my throat when I saw how gorgeous he was. And I didn't want him to see me staring at him, and I was fairly close to the stage. And we made eye contact a couple of times, and I'm wearing a white dress, and I'm real suntanned, and I'm smiling. And he actually, that first night, he said, I thought you were a black girl. I didn't realize that you were actually white because I was that dark. I guess the white dress and the, you know, suntan and everything. But anyhow, after, after a while, when he took a break, Glenda, my girlfriend, wanted to uh, go over because a crowd had gathered around him and he was talking to everybody and signing autographs. She said, let's go over and meet him. And I said, no, you can go if you want. I'm not going to go. And uh, so he's standing under a sign that's pointing to the ladies' room, an arrow, a neon arrow. <laughs> and I said, let's go to the ladies' room. She said, let's stop and talk to him. And I said, you can if you want. I'm not. So we went, and as we, as we passed him by going towards the ladies' room, I just glanced at him, and he was glancing back. <laughs> and so after we went to the ladies' room, I didn't even glance coming back because I, was, I really was speechless. He was, he was just too pretty for words. And, uh, and so we were passing by, and he reached through the crowd that was talking to him, and he reached out and grabbed me by the arm. And, you know, and, and he says, where are you going? Pretty girl, where are you going? And I said, I'm going back to my table. And here's the, and I'm still not looking at him. And, and his face is right here, you know. And so when I turned like this and, and just looked up at him, I was really speechless. And he said, um, I'll be through performing in about 30 minutes. Uh, why don't you show me Biloxi? Why don't you show, is this your hometown? Why don't you show it to me? I said, Biloxi's very small. There's not that much to see. And he says, come on, we can think of something to do. And, uh, and I thought immediately, geez, he don't waste any time. We discussed that later on that night. So I agreed to go out with him that night. We went riding down the beach to different clubs, and basically we didn't really see much of anything but each other. And we sat and we drank Cokes and we just talked. And uh, then we went out and uh, walked on a, a pier that was in front of the White House Hotel that went out forever on the water. And uh, thank you, Lord, it was a full moon, which added to everything. And because his face just glowed under this full moon, and we stood at the end of this um, pier and talked some more. And uh, he, instead of face to face, we had been face to face most of the night. He was behind me and had his arms around me this way, and he kissed me on, raised my long hair up at the time, and he kissed me on the neck a couple of times. And um, <laughs> I tell everybody my goosebumps I had goosebumps. And uh, we, were, we were talking and just looking at the moon move across the sky and talking and just holding tight, you know. And it was just a magical, magical moment or hour or two hours or whatever it was. It was magical. And that night we started out like 9.30 and the date didn't end until 6 a.m. We stayed parked in front of my house until the sun come up. I mean, we got in front of my house at like 3.30 or something like that, a.m., but he stayed, and we just didn't want it to end. We just talked about everything we could imagine. Looking at those chiseled features and everything, it was kind of hard for me not to stare at Elvis. And, 
you know, and he would touch me and just, I mean, he was just absolutely gorgeous. Just so chiseled, you know, and that Greek god look about him and his deep blue eyes and, and his little southern twang. <laughs> he was beautiful. He was the love of my life.